Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. So today we will learn about new chapter kinematics of linear motion. So what is exactly a linear motion? Linear motion kalau kita bayangkan uh, kita lukis graph, linear graph. So kita punya graph akan jadi straight line. So that is linear graph. So sama juga linear motion is a straight line motion in one dimensional. Okay. So, dalam linear motion ni, kita kena tahu few terms. Kita kena analyze terms-terms dalam linear motion so that kita boleh explain um, the motion of a certain object. Okay, so uh, first revision yang kita kena tengok adalah the difference between uh, distance and displacement. Okay, of course, uh, in chapter 1, we already know that distance is a scalar quantity whereas displacement is a vector quantity. So, displacement dia ada magnitude and direction. Tapi distance tak ada. Okay. So, untuk membezakan distance dengan displacement ni. Okay. Kedua-duanya nampak sama dari segi dia punya unit. Both uh, unit, SI unit dah adalah meter. So, dia sebenarnya adalah uh, basic quantity length. Tapi untuk bezakan dia adalah. Okay. Contoh kalau kita bayangkan. Okay. Let's say you are walking from a house to a any shop. Okay. So, kita ada. Uh, point pertama kita adalah rumah. Your house. Okay, so ini adalah first point A, which which is your house and then to B, to the shop. Okay, so distance ni, untuk awak bergerak daripada A kepada B, so of course, you mesti awak akan uh, walk uh, melalui jalan-jalan um, yang boleh walk lah kan. Okay, so mungkin dia punya perjalanan tu berliku sikit. Ha, contoh macam tu lah. Okay, so you have to consider every path that you have taken. To move from your house to the shop. So, that is distance. So, yang membezakan dia dengan displacement. Okay, displacement ni adalah shortcut in straight line. From A to B. From your house to the bookshop. Okay, to the any shop lah. Okay, so that's why dia punya definition dekat sini. For distance, dia adalah total path between two points. From A to B. Tetapi, untuk displacement dia adalah shortcut. The shortest distance. Tapi, it has to be straight line from initial point to the final point. So, daripada initial A kepada point B. Okay, so itu ada dari segi distance dengan displacement. Okay, kita try tengok example 1 dekat bawah ni. So, a car travel from A to B and then from B went back to C. Okay, dia pergi kepada A kepada B and then towards C. Determine the distance and displacement travel by the car. Okay, so kat sini jawapan dah ada dah. Dia dah tunjuk kat awak. Okay, kalau distance mesti total path uh, taken by the car. So, that's why 100 plus with 40. So, we'll get total distance of 140 meter. That is distance. Tetapi untuk displacement pula, okay, ingat dia adalah shortcut. Tapi mesti straight line. From point A to point C. Okay, so mesti straight line. Jadi, daripada A kepada C ni, uh, so ini je lah displacement kita. So, 100 you have to minus with 40. And then, total displacement kita adalah 60 meter. And then, other thing that I need to stress here adalah dia punya simbol. Okay, so displacement punya simbol adalah S. Okay, so saya like kat sini. Dan distance punya simbol adalah D. Okay, usually um, kita gunakan displacement lah, bukan distance. Tapi, kadang-kadang ada juga soalan yang melibatkan distance. So, kita kena check nanti. Okay. So, uh, distance adalah D. Okay, so highlightkan dekat sini, D. Kemudian displacement adalah S. Okay, so next kita nak revise tentang term speed and velocity pula. So, untuk average speed. Okay, so untuk average speed. Macam mana nak kirakan average speed? Okay, kelajuan bagi uh, objek tersebut. Okay, so untuk kita kirakan dia punya average speed, kita just gunakan distance. Berapa banyak total distance travel dan kita bahagi dengan total time taken. Bezanya dengan velocity, okay, of course velocity is a vector quantity, speed is a scalar. Okay, bezanya adalah velocity dia mesti menggunakan displacement. So, dia ada change in displacement over change in time. So, kena tahulah... Uh, Change in displacement tu, dekat mana kita punya initial point, dekat mana kita punya final point, kita kena tolakkan. That is change. Okay. Change in displacement dekat situ, mana kita bahagi dengan berapa banyak time taken to move from one point to the last point. Initial point to the last point. Okay. So, bila kita bahagi 
distance or displacement divided by time, of course kita akan dapat unit bagi speed dan velocity kita adalah meter per second. So mesti menggunakan SI unit for both uh, length untuk distance or displacement dan juga time in second, meter per second. Okay, so let's see example 2. So we have a distance AB here and AC which is sama, 50 meter for both AB and AC. Okay, so kita ada AB, AC. And then a car P takes 10 seconds to move from A to B. And another car Q takes 10 seconds to move from A to C. So, dia, dia punya masa sama sebab dia punya jarak pun sama. Determine the speed and velocity for both cars. Okay, so to solve this, macam mana nak kira speed dengan velocity untuk kedua-dua car? Ya, dari segi distance dengan displacement dia, adakah dia sama? Okay, so contoh kita cari dulu speed. Speed mesti menggunakan formula distance travel over time. So, kedua-dua distance bagi kedua-dua car adalah 50 meter dan time taken pun sama. So, that means uh, untuk kirakan speed for both P and Q, car P and car Q, so kita gunakan distance which is 50. Okay, so dalam kes ni, distance kita 50 lah. And then displacement kita, uh, sorry, time taken kita adalah 10 seconds. So you will get 5 meter per second for speed untuk both B and Q. So ini untuk kedua-dua car, speed without any direction. Tetapi untuk velocity, P and Q is not the same. Kenapa tak sama? Sebab dari segi magnitude, speed tadi sama. Nilai dia akan jadi 5 meter per second for both P and Q tetapi direction dia berbeza. Okay, so velocity for car P is towards B while for car Q still 5 meter per second towards C so dalam case ni magnitude of speed is equal magnitude of velocity is equal but direction of velocity is not the same ok itu dari segi magnitude and direction lah sebenarnya tapi apa yang saya nak highlightkan dekat sini dari segi formula pun dah berbeza ok tak semestinya distance dengan displacement ni sama macam kita bezakan dekat atas tadi Distance adalah total path taken. Displacement is the shortcut. is the shortest uh, straight line distance. Alright, so <coughs> move on to next subtopic. <coughs> so, uh, kita kena differentiate. Okay, what are the difference between instantaneous velocity, average velocity and uniform velocity? So, ada tiga jenis velocity dekat sini. Yang pertama, kita ada average yang kedua kita ada instant dan yang ketiga yang ketiga kita ada uniform. So tadi kita dah differentiate between speed and velocity. Now kita nak fokus kepada velocity sahaja. So average velocity uh, dia punya definition is just a displacement divided by time. Yang ni kita dah belajar dekat atas tadi. So dia punya definition adalah displacement divided by time taken ataupun rate of change of displacement. So the word rate here it means over time. Okay, so that's why dari segi formula dia pula, okay, dia adalah simbol bagi velocity which is V. A, V tu stands for average. So, dia mesti perubahan displacement divided by times in terms of symbol. Kita boleh buat S2 minus S1. So, kena ada dua point, S1 dengan S2, just bahagi je masa. Ataupun kita gunakan delta untuk uh, delta uh, meaning it means change of displacement lah. Delta here means change. Okay, so untuk bezakan dia dengan instantaneous velocity pula, apa beza dengan instant velocity, dan nama pun instant. So, dia adalah velocity at specific time and specific position. Okay, so uh, imagine you are driving a car, for example. You are driving a car, of course, uh, when you are driving a car, you have a range of velocity. So, your velocity ataupun speed of the car is changing. Takkan awak maintain je speed yang sama. Okay, at one particular instant, velocity of that car is um, 90 km per hour. And then after some time, it's 100 km per hour. So, maksudnya at specific time, for example, um, uh, minit ke 10, contoh, your velocity of the car is 100 km per hour. So, that is the instantaneous velocity. So, dia ada specific time. Then, of course, dia ada specific place, specific position. So, waktu, your velocity of the car is 100 km per hour. So, that is the instantaneous velocity. So, dari segi formula pula, okay, dekat sini dia menggunakan formula yang sama, V equals to delta S over delta T. Biasanya adalah, T ni almost zero. 
kenapa equals to zero? Sebab mestilah tak akan ada perubahan time because you only have one time. If you minus, it will be zero. Okay, ataupun kita boleh juga gunakan matematik kita punya expression ds over dt. So, ini kalau let's say kita plot graph of uh, displacement versus time. Okay, so katakanlah saya lukis dekat sini s over t versus time. So, katakanlah kita ada curve. Contoh eh. So, ds over dt ni is actually the gradient for a specific point because it's instant kan so bila instant dia ada satu specific time contoh dekat sini kita ada time so kita perlukan gradient point A ok so ini yang kita panggil sebagai instant velocity bila kita kira gradient dekat point A ni selalu kita buat gradient kita akan buat triangle lah ha, something like that so untuk kita cari instant velocity for point A So, kita gunakan ds over dt. So, itu in terms of graph yang kita akan discuss nanti. Okay. So, beza average dengan instant ni tadi, kalau kita perasan, dia adalah elapsed time. Maksudnya, change in time lah. Dia mesti ada perubahan time. Tetapi, kalau instant, dia mesti specific time. Kalau pada graph pula, kita boleh label dia sebegini. Okay. Contoh, uh, t1 to t2. Okay, T1 to T2. So, dekat sini, ada perubahan time kan? Ada change in time. So, kita boleh dapatkan velocity from T1 to T2. Sebab dia ada perubahan time. Jadi, kita punya S pun akan berubah juga. So, ini S1. Dan ini, point A akan jadi S2. Alright. So, itu adalah average velocity. Okay, and last, kita nak tengok a uniform velocity pula. So, for uniform velocity, Uh, the term uniform here, it means constant. So, dari segi magnitude, mesti constant. Dari segi direction pun mesti sama. Tak akan berubah. So, it only has one value. So, you are driving the same car. Imagine, kalau dalam kereta, ada certain kereta tu dicanggih sikit. Dia ada function, feature, cruise. Tak silap saya, you can just maintain at one speed. So, that is uniform velocity. Okay, so we still use the same formula. Ds over, this, ds over dt and then gradient kalau so, let's move on to the acceleration ok so sama juga kita nak differentiate between instantaneous acceleration average and also uniform acceleration So, untuk yang pertama, average acceleration, dia pun ada specific formula. Kalau average velocity, displacement over time. Tetapi acceleration, dia adalah change in velocity over change in time. So, dia relate macam tu lah. Kalau Vs over T, kalau AV over T. Tapi jangan lupa, dia wajib ada delta. So, delta here means change in velocity over change in time. So, dalam kes ni, kita kena tahu... Uh, velocity kita ada dua simbol yang kita gunakan. So, bila change in velocity, maksudnya V2 ni mesti final velocity, V1 mesti initial velocity. So, simbol yang kita gunakan untuk final memang V lah. Initial usually kita gunakan U. Okay? So, V minus U over delta t. Sebab tu kadang-kadang kita tengok ada certain reference book dia menggunakan formula V minus U over T. Change in time lah. Okay, so that is average acceleration. So, the difference between average and instant, same thing macam velocity tadi. Acceleration in, at a particular time at specific position. Okay, so kita menggunakan formula yang sama. It's just that kalau kita ada graph of S versus T, kalau V over T, kita just differentiate. Kita just, sorry, kita bukan differentiate, kita cari gradient dia. Okay. Kalau kita ada graph S over T, so dia panjang sikit lah step dia. Okay. So, that is the relation between S, V dan juga E. So, kadang-kadang dalam uh, mungkin ada soalan dia akan bagi um, S. In a function of t. Contoh dia bagi satu function s in terms of t. Kemudian kita kena guna math skill sikit lah. Mungkin kita kena differentiate untuk dapatkan 
Tapi usually in physics, kita analyze menggunakan graph lah. So that means kita kena calculate dia punya gradient. Okay, and lastly, dia punya uniform acceleration. So of course, uniform means constant. Acceleration kita ada constant magnitude and the direction also not changing. Dan ingat, uh, acceleration, velocity ni semua adalah vector quantity. Also displacement, all are vectors quantity. So it has a direction. Okay, so next adalah, uh, okay, so uh, acceleration tu dalam bahasa Melayu, direct transfer dia adalah pecutan. Contoh, kalau awak drive car tadi, uh, uh, kita tekan minyak kan, uh, kita tekan minyak, so maksudnya velocity kita akan bertambah, so that means you are accelerating, the car is accelerating, so the car is going Uh, the, the velocity of the car is going to increase, kan? Sebab dia accelerate. Okay? So, kalau lah car tu slowing down. Okay? So, car tu slowing down. So, of course, kalau car slowing down, velocity dia akan berkurang. Jadi, your final velocity V will be lower than initial velocity V. So, kalau kita menggunakan formula ini, V kita lebih rendah daripada U. Kalau kita tolak, of course, kita akan dapat A kita negatif. Okay, so A negative usually is called as deceleration or retardation. Usually, kita gunakan deceleration lah, the term deceleration. To indicate the car, the object is decelerating. The velocity dia decreases. Okay, so macam mana pula dari segi direction dia? Contoh tadi kan, object tadi ataupun your car is moving to the right. Okay, so what, dia punya displacement kanan. Velocity pun kanan, okay, so semuanya positif sebab positif x exists, tapi sekarang velocity dia berkurang, okay, so sebab dia nak stop, the car is slowing down until it stop completely, so what will happen adalah acceleration kita mesti akan opposite direction and it has to be negative, okay, so bila dia negative, baru kita akan uh, conclude yang the car is slowing down, so the car is decelerating. Rating. Okay, so that is acceleration. So, let's move on to example 3. Okay, example 3, kita just baca dengan laju. A bus takes 90 seconds to travel along a straight road for 600 meter. Time, straight road sahaja for 600 meter. So, we can simply assume this is S. Ini time, ini S kita. What is the average velocity of the bus? Okay, so as simple as kita menggunakan sahaja formula. V lah, bukan A kan. V average, change in displacement over change in time. So, dekat sini, uh, kita punya straight road adalah memang 600 meter. So, memang total displacement kita adalah 600 just divided by 90 second to get the velocity. So, just check jawapan akhir betul ke tak. For example, 4. Determine the average acceleration for each of the following case. Okay, case pertama, kita ada from 0 second to 8 second where the velocity is constant. Okay, so velocity constant, okay, kita nak cari acceleration kan, is change in velocity over change in time. So, kalau lah tak ada pun perubahan velocity, 10 minus 10. Okay, V final kita, let's say kita ambil as 10. V initial kita, kita ambil as 0. So, kita label lah ini U. Okay, U kita adalah 10. V kita, final velocity adalah 10. And then T1 kita adalah 0 second. T2 kita adalah 8 second. So, kalau kita substitute, 10 V minus U kan? Dia punya formula is V minus U over change in time. T2 minus T1. So, 10 minus 10. 8 minus 0. So, you will get 0. And the unit is MS negative 2 lah. Okay, sebab dekat atas ni MS negative 1. Dekat bawah ni S. So, dia jadi MS negative 2. So, kat sini tak ada acceleration. So, the car is moving with uniform velocity. Sebab acceleration kita kosong. Okay, sebab velocity kita constant sahaja. And then, for the second case, kalau kita tengok, uh, from 0 second to 6 second, the velocity is increasing. Tapi kalau perasan, dia punya uh, increase value dia constant. From 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. So, kalau kita imagine ini adalah kita punya initial. This is our final. So, untuk kira acceleration, V kita adalah 30, U kita adalah 0. 
and then which is minus 6 minus 0, you will get 5 ms negative 2. Then it's positive lah. Bermaksud kat sini, S. Okay, this speeding up. Velocity dia mesti naik. So, kita dah double check. Velocity final lebih tinggi pada velocity initial. Bermaksud acceleration kita positif lah. Dia bukan decelerate. Okay, last kali we have example 5 here. Okay, ni contoh equation yang function of S with respect to time. So, dia bagi uh, equation dalam macam math. Uh, equation of displacement. Dalam term T. So, dekat sini, S is the displacement, T is time lah. So, soalan dia at time 2 second, determine the displacement of the particle. So, dia bagi juga unit for displacement is in meter and time is in second. So, kita highlightkan dekat sini nanti. So, bila kita kira, kita kena tahu lah. Okay, so kita kena tahu apa unit bagi S, apa unit bagi T dan apa unit bagi velocity dan juga acceleration. So, soalan dia minta S at time 2 second. So, ni macam sebenarnya just fikir logik je lah. Okay, so dia minta S given value of time. So, just simply substitute sahaja time kita 2 second in the function, function of S basically. Okay. So, kita boleh keluarkan, uh, sorry, uh, jawapan akhir bagi displacement dan tulis dia punya unit. So, that is the value of S at time 2 second. So, sekarang, um, objek ni after 2 second, dia berada pada position ini. Kalau betul, jawapan dia adalah 12.0 meter. So, dia berada pada position inilah, 12 meter from origin. Okay, so for question B. velocity Sama juga at 2 second lah kan. Sebab dia kata at time 2 second, calculate its velocity pula. So, daripada equation S tadi, okay, daripada equation S, 3T cube minus 4T square plus 2T, how to calculate the velocity? So, we have the formula V is dS over dt. Okay, so kita kena guna math sikit. Maksudnya kita kena differentiate this equation. So, how to differentiate this equation? Okay, apply awak punya math. So, to calculate the velocity, ds over dt, 3 times 3 is 9t square minus 4 times 2 is 8t plus with 2. So, kita dapat equation V lah. So, sebab kita dah differentiate sekali. So, meaning dia nak t, uh, sorry, dia nak velocity at time t equal to 2.00 second. So, bila dia minta velocity at specific time, okay, so, we call it as instantaneous velocity. So, bila kita substitute nilai 2 second dalam formula velocity, so, velocity kita akan dapat ni adalah instantaneous velocity. Alright. So, simply substitute 2.00 square minus 8.00 plus 2. So, just check jawapan akhir. Sama tak dengan yang saya bagi. Dan of course, unit for velocity ms negative 1 sebab kita gunakan displacement kita meter time kita second alright so last kali dia punya soalan adalah acceleration also time kita tak nampak lah also time t equals to 2 second ok so saya highlightkan lagi sekali lah dekat sini t equals to 2 second alright so c acceleration at t equals to 2 second. So, dekat sini pun sama. So, bila dia mention specific time, so acceleration ni akan jadi instantaneous acceleration. So, first daripada part D, kita dah ada equation V equals to 90 square minus 80 plus 2. So, ini adalah equation of V. So, dalam note study kita dah belajar equation for acceleration. To get the acceleration, we know the formula is change in V over T. So, this time around kita gunakan dV over dT lah sebab kita nak differentiate equation of V. Alright. So, to differentiate equation V. So, 9 times 2 is 18. T. Okay, 2 darab 9 minus 8. So, yang lain tak ada lah. So, ini adalah equation acceleration. Dan kita kena substitute time to second. Alright, so, masukkan nilai. Okay, so, checklah jawapan kita. Dan final unit for acceleration is ms negative 
tu. So just check jawapan akhir betul ke tak. Dan macam saya dah remind dalam chapter 1, final answer kita usually in two decimal point ataupun in standard form kalau dia ada banyak kosong. Alright, so that's all for now. Okay, so thank you.